Hello there, today we'll be doing number of connected components in graph. However, we do not have lead code premium, and I believe many of you guys do not either. This is number 89. Uh, since we do not have uh, lead code premium, we cannot see the problem, but it is very similar to number of provinces, which is basically looking for a number of provinces or um, the number of items that are, um, I guess, disconnected uh, from each other. And so, as you can see here, this particular item is connected. Um, I mean, the easiest way to start a problem is to take a look at the examples and figure out how they uh, find out what they, I mean, get make observations and see what's going on. And the first thing we see is that uh, this is uh, one example and this is another example. What we see here is that uh, connected is when um, they are one to one and to one. So basically, if you create basically a union find, you would see that um, they would have no other, they're, they're, they are the root of themselves. Every time they have, we have a point where they root someone else as their apparent, then uh, we can reduce a count. And like in here, so we reduce the count for zero and one. So they're both pointing to each other. And that means we have a total of two items, which is the output here. And we do not connect anything else, and they're only pointing to themselves. So that's a total of three connections here. So basically, um, to, to do this problem, it's a little different from compared to other problems. But what we'll do is for i in range, um, we're going to set n equals the length of is connected, because we're doing a matrix. Um, so for i in range n and for j in range n, what we're going to do is if is connected is uh, of i and j is equal equal to 1, um, then we're going to do a union of the two. So we're going to do a union. Um, union of i and j and then we're going to return the count. The count is going to be set to um, equal to n at this point and we're going to subtract it. Um, n being the number of connections, basically the number of provinces available. So the thing is, um, what happens in union i and j is that it looks that at, at i, the item at i, which is, uh, let's say, here on the first row, so basically the first column, and j in the, uh, and the, uh, in, the, in the column below, and that's how we get i and j. Um, yeah. So let's get to it. So basically the find function and the, um, the basically union function is very similar to what we see in neat code um, while resolution result is equal to root of result so basically as long as these items are not equal that means they are not equal to themselves and they're equal to another parent we're going to look um, for its parent and return res a result um, so basically root of result uh, equals the root root result. And this this item here is gonna set the parent to its grandparent to make um, things a little bit easier if, if it exists. Uh, speed things up a little bit. Anyways, um, we need to do a union now. Union of n1 and n2. We're looking at two different items here. Um, yeah, so what's going to happen is that uh, we're going to do a non-local of the count and R1 and R2 is going to be find N1 and find N2. And so if R1 does not equal R2, then uh, roots of R2 um, is equal to R1 and we're going to set the count minus equals 1. And that should do our answer. Oh, okay. Uh, what's happening here? Let's see. Not exactly sure. What's wrong? Let's 
something is wrong here. Hmm, not sure. I, uh, I, I really don't know what's going on here, why that's causing that problem, what's going on ex exactly. Um, hmm, everything's looking fine. Ah, I see. That was a... Uh, root. Oh, we did not create root. Right. Root is equal to i for i in the range of n. The reason for that is because we're going to set root to it itself. And we're going to change it whenever it changes. And that's how we solve this problem. Um, yeah, hopefully that helps. Um, I think running through the problem once will help a little bit more and instill what we have learned here. What we're learning here is doing a union find again and making sure that uh, if ever we point to another item, we lose another item. That's the lesson here. So let's go through the first example. Uh, so root is equal to 0, 1, and 2, pointing to itself. And the count is equal to, let's say, 3 at this point, because we have three items. What happens is that uh, through the first union of the 0, 0, 0, 1, it's pointing to 0, so nothing changes. 0, 1 is when the first change happens, because it finds that, um, well, the first item does not equal to the second item. So therefore, the root of the second item becomes the first item, which means this becomes zero. And count minus equals one. So count is now two. Three being, turns into two. Then at this point, uh, we check uh, zero, do nothing, and then we check one. Same deal, uh, but then we swap the zero and the one, and they're, they're, they're the same parent now, so nothing changes. And one is one, and not, nothing changes there either. So um, with that, uh, we move down here, and it's just the same item, 3 is 3. And therefore, we return 2. As for this one, uh, nothing changes. 0, 0, same. 0, 1, same. 0, 2, same. Uh, everything is the same, and it goes all the way down, so we get return a count of 3. Um, I think um, this should be a little bit more helpful uh, because we've gone through a problem. It's not the most efficient solution at this point, it seems. Um, it, it seems it's we're, we're, it's an n squared time, and n squared, no, it's n space uh, because of the, the root. Um, anyways, uh, that, that it solves our particular problem by looking at the root and it's uh, the, the, the root item uh, where it's pointing to. And if it's pointing to, it's the same item or a different item or to each other. And um, how would you, I think a good question is, how would you come up with this a solution to this type of problem and uh, learn union fine? Just learn union fine. Do more of these types of problems. Um, understand the concept between union, be behind the union fine, which is to... Um, Whenever you, you see a parent, uh, uh, or when you see a different item, or a different ranked item, as in this particular problem, redundant connections, 
uh, which we did a couple days ago. Um, this particular problem where we looked at the root and the rank and we pointed the, the parent to its parent item. Um, because we're pointing into its parent item, um, we can see that it is a uh, undirected graph. I mean, uh, uh, we can see that, that it's pointing to itself. Um, when, when we find a a um, a, that, something that's not a union, um, yeah, when it's equal to each other, so. Um, in this particular problem, we, we do the same thing. Um, if it's equal to each other, that means it's in the cycle and we don't need to do anything about it. If it's not in the cycle, then we have to, I mean, connect it and subtract it. That's about it. Um, I think there's so much more to learn here. I don't think I've learned enough about this problem to, you know, give you the best picture. This is the picture that I have right now. Uh, please comment below if you have a better picture and or share your video. I would love to learn more. Uh, thank you very much, very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.